challenge. You know, I go through my phone, Lamar. I have a phone. Y'all are in my phone. And, you know, I text you or inbox you. I set you up in the DM. Like, dude, I need you to come on. Um, I have to shout out to all of my friends. Like, <laughs> yo, we need some help. And you graciously said, sure, I'll come on and help you. So I really, really appreciate you for doing that for us today. No problem. You are so awesome. I do want to share his bio for you all because, you know, he's that freaking awesome. So I'm just going to share with you all. Um, using his motto, the gatekeepers are gone. Lamar has leveraged social media to move his website, blackandmarriedwithkids.com, from a small personal blog to an international brand with over 600,000 social media fans and over 42,000 customers across all 50 states and 43 countries. I told you I want to be like you when I grow up. Among the recognition received for his work, Lamar, along with his, with his wife, Renee, who is absolutely fabulous and gorgeous, was named one of Ebony Magazine's Power 100, a list of, of the top 100 movers and shakers in the Black community, finalist for Black Enterprise Family Business of the Year, and Fusion Soft Small Business Icon Award, and winners of the Click Funnels two comma award you know he's got all these accolades and many of you may not have may not know the face behind black and married with kids.com you read the blogs you share it but you kind of didn't know that who who actually founded it well lamar and ronnie are the ones that found it and it started out as a small blog i keep telling y'all don't despise small beginnings and now it's one of the most recognized blogs which has turned he's done movies um you now have a whole the tsp live the what's that the traffic sales and profits mm -hmm. um conferences that are packing out a large arenas within that so i just thank you for finding you know value in sharing your time with us to impart some of these secrets um to selling more online and those strategies so i don't want to keep you because i know we have a lot going on and i know i'm going to have some questions along the way but Tell us more about you and your journey. And, you know, I know there's some secrets there. So if you can give yeah. us some insider secrets um, and then, you know, we'll find out how we can learn more and work with you later. But, you know, tell us a little bit about you and these secrets. Sure. Well, if you don't mind, I'll share my screen now and then I can um, run through some things. I had something I wanted to kind of share with your audience today to kind of walk them through. Like you said, we're talking about, um, you know, secrets and, and secret strategies to selling more online. So first of all, thank you for just an opportunity to come and share with your tribe. Um, but let's get into this. <laughs> All right. Let me uh, switch you guys. All right. Uh, Y'all should be able to see my screen right there as I talk about, um, like I said, the secret strategy is selling more online. Now, um, like Tara said, thank you again for the awesome introduction. My name is Lamar Tom, the creator and founder of Traffic Sales and Profit. We help entrepreneurs drive more traffic, convert more sales, and grow the amount of profit uh, in their businesses. And, and what I always like to talk about first, right? And somebody's like, all right, like, like, all right, this is, this is a picture, right? What's this picture all about? Um, this picture is about one of my favorite things. One of my favorite things is, is action. Um, and when I talk about action, like this right here, um, at the time, uh, this is, um, I think it was 13 at the time, 13 year old vegan, she uh, vegan chef based in Atlanta, Charlotte Chef. And Charlotte Chef created a um, ginger lemonade drink. She had two flavors, original ginger lemonade and then strawberry. Uh, lemonade with it and with these lemonades I bought one I got a hold of one I posted it online I say it's certified gluten-free non-gmo vegan and excellent by a 14 year old african-american vegan chef in Atlanta Charlotte chef grab yours today um, one of my buddies Marquel Russell he saw what I posted online he said uh, he gave me just an eyeball emoji right you know y'all in that emoji like gave me an eyeball emoji he's I told him you would love this trust me he said I'm ordering it now does anybody know what that is below anybody know that is a picture down below right that is what we call a receipt right he actually went out and purchased it so then i had another friend uh byron word he said hey i just got some for my 14 year old daughter in the family um, i'm so excited to try them out and see um uh what recipes are in the cookbook and that's what what is that do we see with byron another thing right another receipt so we go from his receipt um uh then i said zoom in for it he actually when he bought it he bought not only the lemonade, the six pack of that, but the actual cookbook. I'm gonna talk about that. We're gonna tie back to that in just a second, Tara. Um, so he bought that. Marquel gets his a week later. He said, hey, my guy Lamar hit me up the other day about delicious juice by 14-year-old entrepreneur, Charlotte Chef. 
And you know me, you know I'm a sucker for youth entrepreneurs, so I put it on order immediately. Just came today. They're absolutely incredible. He posted that. One of his boys say, guess what? I just placed my order. We'll see how it goes. That same week, Byron had bought his when he saw me post it. He gets his. He does a 15-minute taste test with his daughters. Him and his two daughters do a 15-minute taste test on Facebook. They love it. They love it so much that they go back and get the strawberry, the other flavor, and then they do a 20-minute video taste test again. This time his wife is with them, and they all do it. So what I always like to ask people is, like, how many of you would like to have people um, to get a hold of your product, get a hold of your service, and then run to social media to tell other people about it? Run online and tell other people about it. And what this is, is, is this is when your product or service is so good that you have unofficial ambassadors. Your customers turn into ambassadors. They can't wait to spread the word about what you're doing, about what you sell, and about how you sell it because you do it so good. But guess what? The reason that I was able to post online, the reason that uh, Marquel was able to get it and post it, that Byron was able to get it and post it, is all because of one thing. Because Shala Chef and her mom, Celeste, did what, y'all? Somebody drop it in the comments. Any guesses at all, drop it in the comments if you got a guess on what they did. They did one thing. It's a tiny little word. It starts with the letter A, and it's something that they took. They took action. They took action. And, and it literally is, there we go. It literally is that easy, right? They took action. And, and when we look at it, um, this right here, uh, Sharice Jones, she owns um, Sassy Jones uh, 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 accessory line based out of Richmond, Virginia, where she's doing lives, Facebook lives once a week, that's racking in uh, multiple five figures. Right off of one Facebook Live where she goes on and basically does her own HSN and QVC online every week because she takes action. This right here, Dino and Heather Cummings, right? They own a subscription box called Curl Kit, where, where just last year they were on the Inc. 5000 list of the country's fastest growing companies, all because Heather went natural. She was trying different products and said, you know what? Um, there have to be other women out here like me that are doing the transition. They're trying to figure out what to use and what works for them. They put a subscription box together. Now, right, they've uh, had, you know, uh, I don't know how many, like maybe 30, 40,000 customers total over the lifespan of this thing or more, all because they took action. And, and this right here, again, I just like to show you different people in different lanes that sell different things because somebody's always saying, that's great, but it won't work for me. This right here is Rosalind Goodwin and her daughter, Gabrielle. Gabrielle last year had the hashtag of the year. Gabrielle's hashtag, was six figures in the sixth grade because she built a six figure business in the sixth grade. Are y'all, are y'all hear me with this, right? So if she did it, <laughs> and by the time she got to sixth grade, y'all, we ain't in the sixth grade no more. So that means we, we definitely could do it too. But her and her mom, they invented a double sided, double snap barrette that does not come out, right? Anybody ever had a barrette and they had no barrettes be, you know, you lose them here and there. If you ever had girls, I got three girls, you send them to school, you send them out to play, they come back. Ain't nothing on their hand anymore. They invented one that does not come out. Um, and now, right, they're sold in Target. All because they did what? All because they took action. And it literally is that simple. So, so as we have this conversation, the first thing I want to preface it by, and the first thing I want y'all to focus on, is that taking as many notes as you can is amazing. But if you don't actually take action on those notes, then it doesn't equate to anything. So we have to get clear about that. I need you guys to take action. So. When I talk to audiences, most of the time, the people I talk to fall into one or two buckets. And the first bucket is people that just need more traffic. They got a great product. They got a great service. They can convert it when people get in front of them, but they just can't get up in front of enough people. And then the other thing, and the thing we're really focusing on today is people that need more sales, right? They need to figure out how to convert something better. They need to figure out how to make their offer uh, truly irresistible. They need to figure out, all right, you know, I got people buying a little bit, but how can I transition to buy a lot? Anybody ever wondered that? Anybody in that situation right there? You know, I got people laying on my website. I might have people I talk on the phone from time to time. But how can I actually convert these people? And, and I know I keep hearing about these businesses that make all this money online. I keep hearing about, um, you know, people that, that, that are working from home, uh, that are building teams, you know, that are, are, are acquiring freedom, right? Financial freedom, time freedom, whatever it may be. Like, what's the actual formula to make that happen? Anybody ever wondered that before? And, and, and it's something that I see people run into a lot. And that's why I'm excited here today as we talk about focusing on a secret strategy to make more sales and money online. Um, real quick, I won't spend a long time on it. Tara kind of gave you an introduction. But again, my name is Lamar Tyler. Along with my wife, Ronnie, we co-founded 
the world's largest African-American marriage and parenting site, blackandmarriedwithkids.com. Um, we did that 12 years ago now. And once we did it, people said, hey, show us how to build what you built. So we launched a separate brand called Traffic, Sales, and Profit, like I mentioned. Uh, I, I speak all over the place, uh, published nine books, ebooks, audio books, paperback, um, seven full-length documentary films. We've been on the Ebony's Power 100 list of the country's most influential African-Americans. Um, finalist for Black Enterprise, Family Business of the Year, Infusion Saw, Small Business Icon. And early this year, we snagged the um, uh, ClickFunnels 2 Comic Club Award. Most importantly, we've sold over 42,000, uh, right? So over 42,000 families in all 50 of these states in 43 countries around the world. I'd like to say that just from the perspective of, as we go through this conversation, we've sold pretty much everything, right? Everything I'm talking about, like we've sold products, we've sold services, we've sold eBooks, audio books, membership sites, workshops, conferences, events, cruises. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, um, like I said, uh, coaching, we've done uh, masterminds, like pretty much anything you could think of, we've sold it. And if we haven't sold it, we've had a client that's actually sold it as well. We've been featuring a ton of press from today's show, uh, CNN, HLN, Ebony, Essence, Jet. We've worked with many of America's largest brands from Pampers and Hanes, the TV land, Disney, and a ton of others. But like I said, we sell stuff. This right here is a picture of me. We did a, a six-figure launch of one of our films on pre-sale, right? Pre-sale. This six-figure launch is me standing in front of the actual DVDs for we got them over to the post office to ship out. Like I said, we did um, seven full-length documentary films. We would do our own seven to ten city tours, screen around the country. That picture right there is from the public playhouse in Chevrolet, Maryland. Shout out to PG County. Uh, I'm in Atlanta now, but I'm from PG County. Shout out to PG County. Uh, we had 500 people in attendance, folding chairs down the aisle, and then had to add a, another show later that afternoon. We got another 300 people in. Like I mentioned, we've done four cruises now for our Black and Married with Kids brand, and we do conference for traffic, sales, and profit. This is the first conference, 47 people in attendance. Most of them had free tickets to come because they bought an online course and we gave them a ticket to come with it. Um, but last year's event, uh, we had 600 people here in Atlanta. So um, the way we get from 47 to 600 is guess what? Action. We don't get to 600 if we don't push past the first event where we wanted 200, but we only got 47. I want to repeat that one time. We don't get to 200. I mean, excuse me, 600 last year. If the first event where we hoped we had, the goal was 200. We said, if we have at least 100, we'd be cool. We had 60-something people confirm, 47 people show up. People say, well, Lamar, you know, how do you grow and scale that thing? What I say is that, that when most people would have quit, right, and we, we were um, disappointed, but the difference I always say is we were disappointed, not defeated. Too many entrepreneurs get defeated. So especially as we have this conversation about selling online, about building a business online, like as you move through these different stages of building your business and, and trying to build a juggernaut online, you have to realize that, yeah, like, like disappointment is a part of the actual process. But what we don't get, we don't get defeated as we kind of push through and actually move it. All right. So uh, what I want to focus on today are the three ways to make more money online. Three ways to make more money online, right? And if you're watching, I would love it if you dropped a comment. Tell me what kind of business you got. So as I'm going through, um, you know, we can maybe use some of you guys' examples as we talk about it. The first way, let's jump right into it, is to sell to new what? New customers. Sell to new customers. So the first way I say, okay, you know, I want to get up and I want to sell to new customers is through email marketing. You have to build that list, right? Um, social media is cool, but guess what? You don't own social media. Going to other people's communities is cool, but guess what? You don't own their audiences. Like at some point, you have to own your own audience. And owning your own audience will give you the best return on your investment when it comes to marketing um, that you could probably possibly ever imagine. So we have to, at some point, begin to build our own list. One of the best ways to do that is actually through email, email marketing, and building up what you actually have, right? Um, number two, we look at selling new customers. I won't spend a long time on this, like I said, because everybody is always focused on selling to new people, selling new people, selling new people. Content marketing. Can we create blogs? Can we create videos? Right? Me and Tara, we were talking before we started, and, and um, you know, she didn't know a video because I saw her doing a video just a few weeks ago. I saw her on with my guy, uh, Jack Daniels, right? And I saw, you know, I was scrolling through my feed and I saw her and Jack on talking and talking business. Um, I've been doing a ton of video. It seems like I've been doing too much video because I'm tired all the time now, but I've been doing a ton of video. I've been trying to, you know, ramp up on my YouTube and ramp up on my Facebook lives. But I'm doing content marketing, taking my message 
my brand, my story, my product, my service, finding out what the challenge is, overcoming that challenge, um, proof of concept, everything to the people and the audience I want to serve through actual content. And then that content can bring those new leads back to me and I want to convert some of those leads into customers as we do it. Um, number three could be social media marketing, right? Social media, of course, using things like, like Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Pinterest, right? And when people always say, Lamar, which platform should I use? What I say, first of all, is you need to go to where your actual people are. What, which platform do your people live on? Do they reside on? Is it more of a like B2B type of thing? Maybe you need to spend most of your time on LinkedIn. Um, is it, you know, uh, most of my audience is on Facebook. So that's where I want to be. But first of all, be where your people are at and then spend the majority of time. And then I, I use a strategy I call kind of like a 70, 20, 10 strategy, but 70% of the time, me and my team, we're going to focus on our bread and butter, which is Facebook. 20% of the time, we're going to work on like that number two thing, which for us is Instagram. And then 10% of the time, we're either working with, um, uh, you know, something else that's maybe like that, that C player, you know what I'm saying? Or maybe something that's emerging. And that we say, hey, you know, th there's room and potential for this thing to grow. We want to get ahead of it. What I also say about social media is just like real estate, uh, right? It's um, a location is essential. And your location on social media is your handle. It is your name. So while I say you should spend your time on a specific set of social media platforms, you should own your actual name on all of them. So make sure if you don't do anything today, like that's in your notes, put a star beside it. That's an actual action item for you to actually own, own, own your uh, real estate, right? Your location, your name on those different social media platforms. All right, and then we talk about some new customers. My last one I always talk about is pay per click, right? How can I actually just pay for those people? And of course, that is the fastest way, one of the fastest ways to grow audience, to grow new customers, is just to run something like Facebook ads. You can run LinkedIn ads, or we can run Google AdWords or YouTube ads, just to literally put our product or service, our advertisement in front of people and guide them back to us. Before we do that, we need to be very clear on who it is that we're talking to, who it is that we're actually, um, communicating with who's our perfect avatar, who's our perfect customer, what's the actual language that they use to describe their pain points, their challenges, the issues that they face in life so that we can help them actually overcome those issues and things that they face. Is that making sense, guys? Let me know. All right, all right. See a lot of comments. I love it, I love it. All right, um, number two, right? We talked about getting new customers. Everybody focuses on that. What I'm gonna spend majority of my time on is number two and number three is not just getting new customers, but number two, how can we get current customers to spend more, right? And we can get current customers to spend more, we can increase prices, of course. You know, a lot of times when um, people first start working with a coach, what's one of the first things your coach tell you? You're not charging enough, you need to increase your prices, right? And a lot of us have the bandwidth to actually increase prices and get them up. And if we've been doing the same thing for a long time at the same price, it's probably the same opportunity for you to increase your price and go up as well. So we definitely can increase prices. Um, we can do upsells where we say, all right, you bought this thing, well, let me, you know, introduce you to the next thing that, that would essentially make sense to come after that at a higher price. It can be down sales where, you know, maybe they say, well, I don't want that higher price thing. And then we take them to an actual lower price offer. Or it could be cross sales where they, they get one thing and we um, present them with something else that would fit perfectly right along with that, right? Right along with that. So what's an example of this, Lamar? One of the easy examples I always talk about is when you go to um, a little company called McDonald's. They a few places you might have seen, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. So you go into a place like McDonald's. As soon as you get to McDonald's, what is McDonald's going to ask you? We say, I want the Big Mac. If you stop right there, what is the number one question that they will ask you, right? They're going to say, right, all right, see in the comments, fries, <laughs> right? Can I get you a combo? Can I get you fries and a drink? You know, like, like they're going to try their best to make sure you just don't leave out of there with a sandwich all by itself. So how can I, how can I actually create a combo and something for you? Then if you say, well, I don't want the combo, what they might say is, well, you know, we got the two for two, 250 right there. Let me, let me get you the two for 250. And why they're doing this is because they want to increase something called the AOV. That's the average order value. How can they increase the amount of money that you spend on the way out of that, out of that, that, that uh, store, right? And it's the same thing online. We have people coming online. If they're coming through our e-commerce site and they're buying something, can we give them an offer, right? either before or after they purchase, can we give them an offer and say, hey, you, you bought this. Um, hey, let me also show you this thing. Would you like that? Would you like whatever the fries and drink equivalent is of your product or service? Can we offer that to you in addition on your way out so we can increase the average order value? Now, does everybody say yes to McDonald's? Of course not. 
But for the people that do, I can guarantee that's adding billions of dollars to their bottom line every year just because they asked that one question. So the first thing, I want you to write this down and put a star beside it, is are you asking that question in your business? Are you asking whatever the fries and the drink question is for your business, are you asking that? And you say, well, Lamar, that's easy for McDonald's. I mean, that, 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 that makes sense. But I can't do that in my business. That's what everybody always say. Terry, those people love to say, I can't do that in my business, right? Well, well let's, let's give a few examples. We did one of our films, Generation One in Search of Black Wealth. When we sold it, we said, hey, people that bought Generation One in Search of Black Wealth also um, like to buy our Black Family Film Pack, four films every African-American family needs, plus you get over $250 worth of uh, trainings and bonuses in addition to it. We sold a ton more of product, of DVDs. We made a lot more money just because we asked that one question. Did everybody buy it? No. But a good 20 to 30% of the people that came through did. So then we changed it from a one movie order to a five movie order altogether, right? It's a little company called Amazon. Anybody ever heard of Amazon before? I think they based out of uh, Washington State or somewhere like that. Amazon, when you go and buy on, I know nobody's ever bought on Amazon before. When you buy on Amazon, when you have your first experience there, you'll go and buy. And at the bottom of the page, they'll say, guess what? These things are frequently bought together. And they're going to show you your thing, number one, and two other things. What are they trying to do? Increase the average order value. Increase the amount that you actually spend on the way out the door. Right? Um, at the bottom of the screen with Amazon, they're going to say, hey, customers who bought this also bought these other things. What are they trying to do? Increase that average order value. Right? Company called GoDaddy. Anybody ever heard of GoDaddy? GoDaddy will say, hey, you know what? You can come to us and you can register a domain for $2.99. We got you covered. And, and small print is going to say uh, for the first year. But other than that, right, it's going to say $2.99. We got you covered. But when you get your domain for $2.99, then they're going to say, well, you know, you need private domain registration. Without that, anyone can see your phone number, your address, or more. I know you don't want people seeing your personal stuff. So you say, no, nah, I don't want that. That's an extra $9 a year recurring revenue. Then they're going to say, hey, you need a certified domain with a website seal. Gain your business trust by proving that your site is legitimate. Well, yeah, you know, I do want my, my, my visitors to know that my site is legitimate. That's $4.99 a year additional. So, and these are just, this is just the first page of many that GoDaddy takes you through. So now you went there hooked on the fact that you won't get a $2.99 domain at www.whatever.com. A $2.99 domain, just on this first page, you could easily walk into $14 worth of additional recurring revenue for GoDaddy, right? Every single year. Now, imagine like, now will everybody pick this? No. Some people, most people will probably pick one of these things between this and the three or four other pages that come after it. And then every now and then there's going to be somebody to get all of it. What is that going to do? That's going to make sure they increase their average order value. So even though they baiting you in at $2.99 for a domain, by the time you check out, it's probably $10, $20, $30, something like that on average. That's how they get to the money. Best Buy, a company called Best Buy. You go in and say, hey, I want to buy this Sony camera. Best Buy will say, hey, this camera is $629. But what is the first thing they're going to ask you when you get to the checkout? They're going to say, hey, would you like a maintenance agreement with that? I'm going to say no, because it already comes with a warranty. But, <laughs> but they're going to ask you for that maintenance agreement. Somebody is saying yes to the maintenance agreement. And that maintenance agreement, when they add it on, is a 19% revenue bump for them. Now, think about this. This is what I always ask people. How many people do you think even have to use that maintenance agreement that they sell? <laughs> right turn shaking her head like you can just see you can just see the, the cash register is ringing in the back of best buy they just piling up people's people's agreements in the back right and send them to the bank because that's straight cash for them 19 percent bump in revenue now they ask that question to every person that checks out with one of those like how many how many of those do you think they sell over the course of a day now of course again everybody doesn't get it but let's just say 20 percent of those people buy and if for 20% 20 of the people buy, they make 20% more revenue off of all of those people. Buying computers, buying televisions, buying audio systems, buying cameras and video equipment. Come on, like, like this is the money behind the money. And too many times I'm finding that entrepreneurs aren't picking this money up. They sell the first thing, but what they really don't understand is that the money and a lot of the profit, you ever talk about that? A lot of the profit is on the back, the back end of this thing. Um, somebody saying, well, Lamar, you know, service-based businesses, it doesn't work. I like to give examples because everything works for pretty much everybody. I could be in landscaping. What does that look like? I could be doing aeration, right? Besides cutting the grass, I could upsell you to, hey, I need to aerate your, your lawn. I need to fertilize your lawn twice a year. 
I need to trim back your shrubs. I need to cut back your trees. How about in the fall when I can't cut the grass, what if I upsell you to actually cleaning out your gutters? Power washing your driveway, right, after the snow and the salt and all that stuff pile up for y'all to live up northeast because I live in Atlanta, so it's not something I have to deal with anymore. I'm bragging on y'all. <laughs> Some way it's probably still cold. I would have no idea, right? But it's getting, clear, it's getting this type of clarity around it. I know somebody's saying, well, Lamar, um, and like I said, power watch. Somebody's saying, Lamar, I'm a coach. I saw some coaches in the room. So what does that look like? Besides my coaching, I could do online training. I could do group coaching. I could do one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching if I'm not already doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. I could provide ongoing support. Hey, I've already coached you. The coaching program is over. But for this amount of money, every month we'll just do a check-in. Or every quarter we'll do a check-in. Or once a year, you'll come to me and we'll sit down and do a VIP day to check in and make sure you're still moving forward and progressing along the way that you actually should be. Would everybody say no? I mean, everybody say yes, no, but some people will. And what they'll do? That'll increase the average, right, that these customers spend with you and also increase something called the um, uh, CLV, customer lifetime value. What's the actual amount that a person spends with you over the lifetime of them being a customer of yours connected to your business? The, these are the numbers that we need to improve. And I'm going to uh, tell you real quick why. A lot of people will say, um, you know, Lamar, I want to double the size of my business. And I say, oh, you know, Tara, I say, all right, you know, what's, what's your plan to do that? And they'll say, all right, you know, I had, you know, 200 customers this year. My goal is I got to get to 400 customers. And what I always say is that's cool, but there is another way to double your business. The other way to double your business is to keep the same amount of customers, just double the amount that they spend with you. So, so if your 200 customers spent, uh, on average, you know, uh, $500 with you, instead of focusing on going out and trying to grab more people, grab more people, we focused on trying to move them from $500 to $1,000 over the course of that year. Because that also would actually double the size of your business and it may be actually easier and cheaper, to definitely be cheaper to do, but it might be easier to do than actually going out and trying to find and double the amount of people that you have, especially once you begin to scale and grow and get more and more people in. So we got to be clear about that. And then for coach, you can do done for you services, of course, as well, too. Um, we had an e-commerce shop where we sold uh, T-shirts. We sold a queen crown T-shirt. When they bought that, we say, hey, say big. People who bought the queen crown also bought the king crown. Normally 30, you can get it right now for 25, right? If Amazon did it, guess what? Because of technology, they, we can do it, too. In the first $100,000 that we made in this business, 19% of that came from just offers like that. I want to I make sure we're clear, y'all. Just it's like, it's like the best buy effect. <laughs> Numbers don't lie. 19% of our revenue, right? $19,000 out of the first $100,000 of that business literally came just because we asked them a question after they bought the first day. So what if, like how many of you would like to literally not do anything other than ask one question and increase, increase your revenue by 20% over the next 12 months unless you drop a comment down below? So, so we have just got to, got to, got to, got to get clear on this. Like, like this literally is how easy it is for a lot of you. We've got to get clear on this, right? Um, I use, on this site, I use Shopify. I'm a big fan of Shopify. So I use Shopify on this. But literally, like, like for pretty much any major platforms, y'all, uh, my first book, I wrote a book called The Gatekeepers Are Gone, right? The middleman's been removed, the rise of technology, social media. We have the opportunity to do things that we never could do before, right? Tara can tell you, like, like what, 10 years ago, how much would it cost for you to get an amazing, dynamic website built, right, that, that looked like it compete with the big, it'd be like $10,000 or something. It'd be crazy. Now you can get um, um, a web, and, no, and let, me, let me say this, you spend $10,000, it still ain't gonna look like the big boys. <laughs> That'll just get you in a ballpark. But now you literally can get someone to build you an amazing site, right? An amazing site that looks just like the Coca-Cola or the Best Buy site or the, or the uh, Amazon, like literally, like, like the playing field has been leveled a lot. We have to be able to take advantage of and take care of that opportunity, right? Um, a few more examples just to make sure y'all know I'm not playing here. I was going to a conference in Dallas. I booked my room. They said what? You can get a panoramic city view for just $15 more extra a night, Lamar, or the Horizon Suite for $89 more. I bought uh, a bonsai tree for a friend, right? Sent it, was about to send it to him. They said, hey, <laughs> you sent the bonsai tree. Uh, we also have fertilizer. We got bonsai clippers. Um, we got a bonsai book, right? <laughs> if you all the way into it, you need to read the book on this, right? If you need to get serious for it. 
And I think it was around, um, it was in February when I bought it. So they even tried to upsell me on some Valentine gifts, just in case I was getting it for my boot. So, so y'all, like, look, if, if Pro Flowers is doing it, Best Buy is doing it, McDonald's is doing it, your, your landscaper is doing it, your coach is doing it, you should be doing it too. You should be doing it too. So that, that's just the case I, I want to make on this. Um, and then number three, when I talk about number three, um, is getting current customers to spend more often, right? Like, how can we get people back into the store, back into our um, business, back into coaching? Like, we coach with them, they finish this program, instead of running out and looking for new people all the time, how can we get them back into our program so that we can get them to spend more money with us, right? Those same people to spend more with us. And when we talk about that, um, it's a few things I'm going to give you examples. Number one, bring them into your culture, right? I'll show you that. Number two is deliver awesome customer service. Not just delivering customer service, but deliver awesome customer service. It's hard to get anybody back if you don't wow them and blow them away with the level of service that you provide. Um, number three, right? Give them a reason to return. Special offers, promotional codes. I mean, is there a reason not to come back right now versus tomorrow versus next week or versus next month, right? And the, the longer it takes for you to get me back, the less likely it is that I will come back. The person that bought yesterday is a lot more likely to come back than the person that bought a month ago. The person that bought a month ago is a lot more likely to come back than the person that bought a year ago. So we have to make sure that we're talking to people and working and actively intentional about getting them back into our actual stores, into our um, businesses, whatever that may be. Um, another thing I tell people is know how your product is used. Know how your product, like how does a user, how does a client, um, how does a customer, how do they actually use your product? It was a physical product. If it's something they consume, like how, how long does it take for them to run out? Can we actually present them with another offer before they actually run out with it? Uh, when we sold our t-shirts, we had pretty much automations time so that we had enough time for you to order it, for you to receive it, for you to wear it. Then by the time we figure, okay, they should have wore this shirt by now, we got emails coming asking you to post a picture on social media. We want a testimonial. We want you to tell us how it felt. We want you to share this uh, referral code with somebody else, right? We're getting clear about that. So know how your product is used. And then consider continuity. Continuity is, is, that's where the money, I get a little excited when we talk about that. That's where the money at. So when we talk about bringing them into your culture, a good friend of mine, Gwen Jameer, she has an amazing company, Naturalicious. In Gwen's um, uh, Facebook group, she has a Facebook group called Naturalicious Nation that's for her clients and customers. And she said, hey, hey, quick response. Uh, when shopping online, would you rather have free shipping or percentage off of your purchase? Free shipping or percentage off of your purchase? Right, 36 comments by the time I saw a bunch of people say free shipping. How would you like for your customers to literally tell you what promotion to make for you? Like, think about that. Like, how would you, like, like but this is when you have a culture, when you have a community, when you have a tribe, this is what can happen. Let's take the guesswork out of how we actually market and sell our businesses, but actually have a community and a tribe where you literally can say, hey, y'all, when I sell this thing to you, would you like A or B? And they all say B, 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 and then you come and offer it with them and then they buy it all up because you literally have created what they asked for, right? Um, uh, we did it with our, our, our um, t-shirt shop. We um, would have somebody in, our goal was to get them back within 30 days. So at a certain time I said, use promo codes, things like that, incentives. We say, hey, use this 15% off code. Welcome back, we want you back to buy another shirt. By now you just got a chance to wear yours. You should have enjoyed it. Um, we want to show you how much we appreciate you. I bought something from the company Fathead. You know, they do the, uh, uh, the sports players and memorabilia and all kinds of stuff you can do, and then you can, like, put it up on the walls. When I bought from Fathead, as soon as I checked out, next screen I saw said, save 20% on your next order. Purchase again in the next 24 hours, y'all, and you'll get 20% off. They weren't even waiting 30 days. They wanted me to come back in 24 hours. Now, a company like this, you would assume, sometimes you'd be wrong, but most of the time you would assume that they actually are doing this stuff because it works and because they've tested it out. So just imagine that. They literally are getting some of their customers to come back and spend again within the first day of them actually purchasing. And check this out. I said, I don't want that. I went to my email. I'm looking for my receipt. And what do I see in my, in my email? They send the same thing via email. And then the thing I loved about it is that last line. It says, hey, hurry up and use it now or forward it to a friend before it expires afford it to a friend before it expires. So maybe the goal might not even be for me to use it. It might just for me to get excited about it and be like, man, I, I can't use it. I ain't got my stuff yet, but I can afford it to somebody else. And now they have an actual referral system, right? And we referring people and don't even realize that's what we're in the middle of. But again, I want you to start thinking outside of yourself, start looking at the world around us and how they market to us. And then I want you to use that 
to be able to market to your customers, clients, and um, people are coming to your sphere. We talk about bringing them into our culture. What, what traffic, sales, and profit, our brand, we've created a manifesto. Part of it, we say, hey, we're the manifestation of the work, sweat, and tears our ancestors dreamed about. We don't look outside of our community for a handout. We look inside to provide a hand up. We have a fierce dedication to continual learning. We don't expect to receive business because we're black, receive business because we operate in excellence. When we, we talk about that and we share it with our audience, they love it. They clap, they stand up, they go crazy because we are talking directly to the people, right? We know who we're talking to. We know who, who the people that support us are. We know who the people that we, we are trying to create these products and services are so we can create something that brings them in closer to us and lets them know, hey, we're here for you at the same time. Um, uh, Gwen again, right? Naturalicious. Uh, we talked about consider, considering continuity. Our continuity is recurring revenue. Monthly, the MRR, monthly recurring revenue, or it could be annual recurring revenue, but basically somebody buys something one time and they you know, continually get billed and you, they continually are a client or a customer getting that service over and over and over again. Gwen has a um, four-step hair care system, the Hello Gorgeous hair care system. She says, hey, you know, you can buy a one-time purchase, but when you join our free VIP club, which is a subscription, monthly current revenue, you'll save uh, 15%. She can do that. Uh, somebody said, well, Lamar, that's easy because you got hair care. This right here is Ryan Leslie. Ryan Leslie is a musician, right? He's a, a rapper slash um, R&B artist. And, and Ryan Leslie, he came out with an album uh, called Mozart. And he said, hey, this is my final project. And he said, guess what? Y'all's going to be 120 songs, 120 plus songs. He said, you can get the first 12 now, and then you'll get one per month. And to get the first 12 now and one per month, right, um, you pay something up front. I forgot. It might have been like $12, $10 or something. Um, but then you, all you got to do, right, to get a new song every month is pay $1 a month. If you want one song and you want private um, uh private number to call into a studio line while he recording that's five dollars a month so here we got a musician that set up monthly recurring revenue and what is he selling he's selling access to him i mean essentially all it is right he said hey you know we're gonna release one new song every month right uh, uh 120 songs he gonna have you on hook for years <laughs> for years he's, he's he's devised the program to make him to make you pay him for years right if you're a fan as long as he delivered what he's supposed to deliver but check this out. We talked about the $1 and the $5 offer. At the high end of his offer are $100 and a $1,000 offer per month. It says per song, but that's literally per month because you pay once per month. So with the $100 per song, you get um, uh, VIP concert passes for two to his New Year's Eve castle. He would do a party at New Year's Eve, at, uh, New Year's Eve in a castle in Europe somewhere every year he was doing. Autographed copy of his album, an advice line. You can ask him anything once a month a request line where you could ask uh, for two songs, call into a studio line while you're recording, plus you get a new song every month, plus the first 12 songs today. For $1,000 a month, you get all of that, plus you get to be a part of his crew in any city. So, hey, you know, they're going to L.A. I want to roll with them in L.A., $1,000 a month. Hey, I'm good. I can do that. And I get to actually take a private jet with them at least once a year. So if Ryan Leslie, a musician, can, can figure out and devise a way to have monthly recurring revenue in his business, why can't you? And what I'm gonna say is, is if he can, guess what? That means you can too. Um, and this is something that's interesting. When you get recurring revenue in your business, it actually increases, exponentially increases the worth of your business, right? It's one of my favorite quotes. In the software industry, companies that can demonstrate recurring revenue for a SaaS, SaaS software average, a 6X revenue multiple for valuation compared to a 3X revenue multiple for software companies that sell perpetual licenses. That's one of the reasons now why you can't buy software. For nothing. Like back in the day, you go get your little box, right? You get your little, your little discs, <laughs> your little CDs out of it. You load them up. Now you can't buy nothing. Everybody like, nah, you, your choice is either monthly or annual. Pick one, right? Because literally just, just by changing that revenue model, instead of them getting like a two and a half or a three X valuation in their company, now they're getting a six X valuation. They've doubled the value of the company, right? Of what they could sell a company for just by having monthly recurring revenue. Right? Uh, uh, somebody said, Lamar can't do that in my business. Burger King has monthly recurring revenue. They launched a coffee subscription. Now, most times when I say this, people say, man, I'm not drinking no coffee from Burger King. Y'all, don't worry about that. It's not, we focused on, we focused, we just focused on, we, we just focused on what they doing. Coffee, <laughs> coffee subscription, right? Yeah, somebody is. Coffee subscription, take a sip out of the subscription economy. Um, 
Uh, look, um, one small cup of coffee every day you can get for just five dollars a month. And th their whole thing is they just using a subscription, like not only is it recurring revenue for them, because the, the markup on that coffee is crazy. But even beyond that, they just trying to get you in the store because they know when you get in the store, you won't buy something else besides that coffee, right? Like if they can get you in the store every day, you won't buy some stuff, right? And, and this this uh, is one of my this is my last example. I was at the car wash, right? I was at the car wash one day at the auto bell getting my car wash. Auto bell says, hey, you can get unlimited shine today, tomorrow, the next day, and the day after that. $24.95 a month. $24.95 a month. So, so when I talk about um, uh, you know, secrets, when I talk about strategies, when I'm talking about putting these things together, like all these things I showed you, you can do in your business. There's no reason why you can't do these things in your business. You can't pick them up, you can't put them together. Um, and like I said, if Amazon did it, you can do it too. So, so I want you to focus on those three things. Of course, you want to look at, all right, how can I get new customers? You can do it. But, but more now than anything, you talk about how can I really drive and increase the, the revenue of my business? How can I increase the actual valuation, the worth of my business? I want you to look at how can you increase how much people spend when they check out? Can we do an upsell, some type of offer behind it? Because literally, if you just start asking people, you will make more. One thing I can guarantee you, just ask people, about buying something else, you will make more, right? And then I want you to figure out, is there a way I can have some type of recurring revenue where I sell something once and I get paid month after month after month? Because when you do that, when you're in situations and times like now, right, it gives you a different level of security when you don't have to go out and get new money because money is already automatically pouring into your bank account. All right, so that, that's all I got. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, and I would love to take some questions if we got a few minutes too. Before we go to questions, I, I do want to share um, what you were talking about, how to, um, instead of trying to get new customers, mm -hmm. that you, you tap into the existing customers you have. And because, you know, I ran a financial institution, I used to be the interim president and CEO of a credit union in Atlanta, Georgia. It's cost us more to get new customers. Yes. Right? It, you know, and if our customer base was only one and a half products per customer, that means we have so much room to make money just in our membership alone. So right, what right. could we do to get the members we already have to get more products? So instead of having a checking and a savings, we need them to have a signature loan or a, a loan. We need to then have an auto loan. And then we need to upgrade them so we can have their mortgage. Because if we get their mortgage, we're going to have all the rest of the loans. So our focus was how can we turn that from a one and a half products per customer or member to five products per member? What can we do to do that? And we wouldn't have to worry about getting in. If we have 15,000 members, if we can just increase the products within our 15,000 membership base, that's going to increase the revenue exponentially. You hit on the head. I mean, that, that what you said right there is exactly it. And again, if the banks are doing it, if Amazon is doing it, if Best Buy, literally like this stuff that we talk about is all around us. And it's, it's my wish and my hope the small business owners will start to actually begin to see this. Like I like to take pictures all the time and they'd be like, oh, they got another one, right? I'm at, the, I'm at the gas pump. And while I'm pumping gas, they got this big contraption um, uh, attached to the side of the, of the pump at Kroger, right? To say, hey, would you like your Aditech fuel boost, right? And that's going to be a couple extra dollars. You can get the silver, the gold, or the platinum level, right? Like, like this stuff that we talk about is everywhere. We need to use it in our businesses too. Uh, speaking of gas stations, they'll ask you if they have a car wash attached to it. Would you like your car wash today? Yep. You know, so you're getting gas. Now you need your car wash. You can go right behind the gas station and get your car wash. So that is absolutely, uh, thank you for bringing that up. It just reminded me of a few things that I have homework that I need to do as well. But I know you have some things coming up. How, if we want to work with you more, maybe attend your conferences, how can we connect with you, stay in touch with you, and even attend some of your events that you have? Sure. I'd say um, the, the two easiest ways, um, uh, number one, our Facebook group. We have an amazing Facebook community called Traffic, Sales, and Profit with Lamar Tyler. Um, uh, make, I'm going to do three ways, actually. Make sure you join the Facebook group. It's totally free. Um, we do a, a ton of content, a ton of training, a ton of resources. Um, and even with so much going on right now, right, we've been, been, been stepping up even more. I always say, like, in this time, I think people um, will either step up to lead or they'll be led, right? So my hope is that in our community, like, everybody steps up and doesn't just kind of stand flat-footed waiting to see what's going to happen to them, waiting to see what's going to happen to their business, but you actually take it and you run 
head on to that thing and say, you know what, I I'm in charge of my destiny and my future, and I'm gonna make sure that whatever needs to happen for me and my family um, happens the way it's supposed to. Um, so make sure you join the Facebook group. The other thing I would say is um, our website, of course, traffic sales and profit.com. That's A and D, traffic sales and profit.com. And last but not least, we are ramping up and creating content like crazy, a ton of resources on our YouTube page. So it's just youtube.com forward slash traffic sales and profit. But um, we're doing a, a ton of videos, a ton of interviews, a ton of content, a ton of trainings, and all of it is living on our actual YouTube page as we begin to just be another resource that people can easily get a hold of the information that we present. And I'm a part of the Facebook group and it's a beautiful community. Um, and it, it, you know, those that are in the dualpreneur community, it is a compliment to join TSP community as well because you're gonna learn even more and connect with some more awesome entrepreneurs that are like-minded um, with that. So again, thank you so much. And now we would like to open it up to everyone that's in the group. If your video is on or you'd like to put your video on, um, and you have some questions, simply unmute yourself and you can ask Lamar, the expert, the question. I know y'all got some questions. <laughs> I have a question just more about, cause I know the TSP is about kind of the mechanics around mm -hmm. how do you do this? Um, I, I want to go back to the black and Mary with okay. kids. Like how do you, how did you monetize that? What was that process? Was it the same process? Or, you know, in the beginning, because that's where I am. So go back. Take me back. <laughs> All right. So Let's I'm, go, I'm way, go way back. back. Or, or maybe, <laughs> maybe it was 10 years ago, but, you know, when, you know, but yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to go back. And I'm going to tell you, don't go as far back as we want, because we did it wrong at first. Okay. So, but I'll tell you the wrong way. Yeah, originally, um, how we monetized was strictly through advertising. Because basically what it was, right, it was a blog and it was a website and it became kind of like its own media property. His own digital media property. So when I hate, people, um, I, I'm sorry. I hate to interrupt my own question response, but I do. I guess I want to make it like, how would you do it differently with what you had today? Yeah, so, exactly. Yep, that's what I'm gonna get. Okay, to. all right. So, <laughs> um, uh, we went through advertising, right? But the reason I brought that up is that I was gonna say that was all wrong. Um, and it wasn't all wrong to say that we shouldn't have done any of it. But what I what I realized is that you have to make sure. What I would what I would advise people is to make sure that the ways you drive revenue, you're in control of. Like I said, like your email account and stuff like that. So the cautionary tale part of it we have is, is when we went through advertisers, we didn't control the money. We control it, creating content, how many views we got, how many, how much audience we got. Like, you know, it's all the time, right? Like you need to make sure you focus on being profitable, not just popular. We could control how many people we got in our Facebook groups. But when the advertisers would say, you know what, we're going after the African American community this month, but then the next month switch and say, all right, we're going after Latino, then we don't get paid. Right. So what we, we got hip to was that we had to start serving our own audience. So we started creating our own products and services. So for us in the beginning with Black and Married with Kids, that was documentary films and it moved to eBooks and courses and all this other stuff. Um, but essentially what we did in the answer to your question is we found out, we got real clear. Because at first we, we were, we was creating all this other stuff. We really, we were in tune with the audience, but the money was coming from somewhere else. So when your money comes from somewhere else, you start to pay attention. <laughs> you start to pay attention to the people that pay you. So when we got real clear on, on, all right, you know, we need to focus and create for the audience. What we did is we found out, all right, like what are the biggest challenges and issues that they face? How do we do that? We looked at, um, if you have a blog or you do Facebook lives, or if you create some type of content, we looked at was the content that got the most views, that got the most likes, that got the most share. Like, like what are people coming to us for? Like when we touch about these type of things, right? We looked in our Google Analytics, which is the statistics behind your website once you install. It. And we said, like, these are the articles in, in the buckets that people are most interested in. Communication, infidelity, um, intimacy, right? Money, um, you know, like, like these kind of five or six core things that the couples wanted. And the singles, singles was like a big section too. So like these, these five or six things that people came to us for and we cut everything else. We had a travel section, we cut that. We had a food section, we cut... All this other stuff, we cut all of it, got crystal clear on what people needed. And then once we found out what they needed, then we changed and we started creating products based on that. Oh, communication is the biggest thing people need? Oh, we had a communication ebook. Then we had a communication course. We did communication webinars. Oh, what's the number two thing? Um, uh, uh, cheating and infidelity. Then we had a product line based on that. Then we had a product line based on other things. So I say, you know, going back, starting from scratch. Um, uh, I did another summit early. I did a summit earlier day and they asked me, you know, what's five things I would do if I started a business today? I say, number one is 
if I got an audience or I think these are people I want to serve, find out what their biggest problem or challenge is. And then you create your product or service to overcome that challenge. Then once you do that, you just start building an audience to get in front of them. Or you connect with somebody that already has an audience and that's in front of them so that you can share how your product or service helps um, overcome the challenge that they face. And I agree with you, Lamar, because that's the primary reason, shameless plug, that's the primary reason why I wrote the book for Financial Languages, right? Mm -hmm. Because as Madam Money, what most people were coming to me for is my wife is a spender or my husband's a spender and they keep spending all my money and I'm a saver and I'm afraid to talk to them. Oh no, I bought something, but I'm afraid. How can I communicate? And I can't talk to my husband or my wife about money. And so when I keep going and I get a whole bunch of marriage counselors that pull me in to have the financial conversations with their clients, that's when I was like, ding, 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 ding. We need mm -hmm. to have a solution for that. And that's how the four financial languages came about is to help people communicate about money and understand their financial language. And so it is listening to what people, people will tell you what they want to buy. Yes. They, yes. They're very clear about it. You can watch them on their Facebook page, on their timeline, in the groups. They'll tell you whatever they're griping about or they're having a challenge about, they're telling you what they're willing to spend their money on. Yeah, totally. Without a shadow, but I mean, that, that what you said right there is like totally 100% it. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. Is there anyone else that's in the group that would like to ask a question before we wrap up? You kind of like, you just used to, Lamar, you either scared everybody or you just told them everything. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Carmen. I'll ask another question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, to, so thinking about vision, so where do you see marketing, online marketing, where, where do you see two years down the road, even one year down the road? What, what, what changes do you see? Because this is your industry. Yeah, you know, I said, that's a good, nobody up. ever asked me that question. That's a good question. <laughs> um, I'll say a few things. I think um, everything going on now with the pandemic and, all this stuff, I think this has accelerated e-commerce probably three to five years down the road, at least. Um, because we all, like every year we buy like a little bit more online than we did the year before. We get a little more comfortable spending online. We probably, you know, go to the store a little bit less. But now it's a whole lot of people that have never shopped online. They still didn't trust online, but now they're forced to. They have it's a whole lot of people. It's a whole lot of stuff that you're buying now online that you normally just would always just go to the store and get. But either you can't go to the store or you ain't trying to be up in the store, right? right. One or the other. So it literally has accelerated online. So the opportunity to sell products and services online has just increased even more. Um, the other thing I would say is um, um, this is something around uh, service-based businesses. Because I think for years, right, like courses and courseware have been like a huge, huge industry. And I saw... Um, before I think it said a few folks, few folks in the audience said uh, they were um, coaches. Courseware has been huge, right? That's like probably a billion trillion dollar industry. People buying courses in, in education, and it still would be big. But I think there are now that as people buy more courses and they accumulate courses, I think they're realizing that I got all these courses that I ain't never took. <laughs> I got all these courses I spent money on, and I, like it ain't even about the course. The course can be great, but we start not to trust ourselves just because we got a collection of logins and courses and PDFs on our machine that we never dive all the way into. So one of the things that I'm seeing happening now, um, I always tell my folks about, and, and I think will happen even more, is for people to say, hey, you know, you can get the course, but I got this, you know, service, that I'll do it with you. Or I got this service where I'll just do it for you. I think more and more because people don't trust themselves, they're willing to spend and invest bigger dollars if you can just take the whole burden and headache off me and just do it all, right? right. Because, because they say the tech is getting easier, but it's still a lot of people is tech averse, right? Um, and it's still, still don't know how to do it. And you can teach them everything, you know, this side of it, that side of it, and all the way 360s around, and they still won't be able to do it themselves. Or even if they try, it'll take too much time. So right. I think literally, like, like there are big ticket opportunities for people that come in and say, hey, I not only just, you know, just get the course and do it, but me, my team, you know, something like that, we can actually help walk you through the process so that you can get the results faster and people are going to be willing to pay for that. I mean, that, that's what I'm experiencing with the websites. Yeah, you can do it yourself and build it yourself. But by the time you, you figure out how to do it the way you want it, it's then you spent so much time. So you've lost revenue yes. because you spend too much time trying to figure it out. Right. Yep. And so better than to get with a professional or an expert that knows how to do it can do it quick so that you can start making money faster. So that's, that's worth the investment. Totally true. 
Awesome. So thank you so much for everyone. Since you're on here, Carmen, tell us a little bit about you, what you do, and how we can get in contact with you. Sure. Thank you. Hey, I'm Carmen Caldwell. I'm a love and relationship coach, also um, life coaching. So I support men and women in connecting in their relationships with God and self so they can experience joy and fulfillment in life and in love. Um, all of my social media handles are at Carmen Connects You, and it's the letter U. Beautiful. Oh, CarmenCaldwell.com. You just talked about websites. <laughs> there you go. CarmenCaldwell.com. Thank you. My ride or die chick, Michi. Hey girl, hey. Hey girl, hey. I am Michi Renee. I am your intuitive life and business coach. I help people who want to start a business or they are they have an idea. I help them monetize on their skills, gifts, and talents in fun and aligned ways. The name of my business is the Unicorn Tribe, and you can find me all over social media under that, U-N-I-K-O-R-N-T-R-Y-B-E, because I am unique and so is my tribe. There you go. I love it. I love it. I love it. And again, my name is Tara Jackson, aka Madam Money. You may know me as the a personal finance expert and contributor on the likes of Fox News, Al Jazeera, Black Enterprise, all of those, Ricky Smiley Morning Show, all those. But what you probably didn't know is that I have a business that helps small businesses look like Fortune 500 companies online. Yes, I have a website business called SRJ business solutions. If you like your bit, you need a website, you need it redesigned, you need an e-learning, you need e-commerce, we got you. Just go to SRJ websites, SRJ websites with an S dot com. You can schedule a consultation so we can have a conversation about your website needs. Again, thank you, Lamar, so much. We can't wait to reconnect with you. you. Um, yes, Gabby is absolutely fabulous. I love that. I I knew her when it first came out and her mom and to see her in Target now right. is just blowing my mind. So, you know, if a six-year-old can do it or a six, what, a sixth grader sixth grade, right. can do it, <laughs> we ain't got no choice, right? That's it. So thank That's you, it. thank you, thank you everyone for tuning in and watching hashtag replay. Make sure you share this information. It was absolutely great. And again, I love you. There is nothing you can do about it. And of course, don't forget y'all, Wash them hands. Come on. All right. See you next time.